Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to create this satisfying push away effect using rigid bodies and force fields. This effect can be used with any collection of objects that you want, so feel free to get creative. If you want to use the same ones I'm using, I'll put the link in the description. This tutorial was inspired by Kimco. He did a pretty similar effect right here, as you can see. So go to his page and give him a follow. He does some really cool simulations. Here we are in Blender, and the first thing that we're gonna do is scatter all of these objects along a plane. And to do that, we're gonna be using geometry nodes. Select your scene collection, right click and create a new collection. We'll drag this above the particles. Next, we're gonna press Shift A, add in a plane object. Scale this plane up a little bit and then scale it along the X till we get something like this. Make sure you press Control A and apply the scale to it as well. And then go ahead and hide the particles. We're not gonna really need them. We're gonna jump over to the Geometry Nodes workspace, create a new system. And to add all of these to this plane, we're gonna add in a Distribute Points on Faces node. So in the search bar, type in Distribute, Distribute Points on Faces. Place that right here. Then we're going to add in an instance on points node, place that here, then take the particle collection, click and drag and drag it into our system. We're gonna take the instances, plug it into the instance. Next, we're going to turn on separate children and reset children. And then over in the instance on points node, make sure pick instance is enabled. This will make sure that the instance is not instancing the entire collection, but rather the individual objects. Next, we're gonna come over to the Distribute Points on Faces node, switch it to the second option, and this will give us a distance minimum value. If we drag this up, this is the minimum distance from each particle. Now I do want to bring the scale down a little bit. Let's go with around 0.3, maybe like 0.35. Then I'm gonna bring up the density until we get a lot of particles. The distance is a little bit too big, so let's drag that down until we get some more particles. Now to give everything a little bit more randomness, let's press Shift A, add in a random value node, take the value, we're gonna plug it into the rotation, and then just bring up the max value to something crazy like that, and that should give us a lot of randomness. Next, we'll do the same thing for the scale, we'll add in a new random value node. For the minimum, let's go with 0.2, and for the maximum, let's go with 0.4. Take this and plug it into the scale. That is looking pretty good. Since they're a little bit smaller now, we may be able to bring the density or the minimum distance down just a tiny bit, something like that. With that done, we can jump back over to the layout option and here we can see all of our objects. Next, what we need to do is make all of these objects real because right now it's a single object and they're just instances. And to do that, we're gonna press Control A and then click on Make Instances Real. Now we should have a lot of objects, as you can see in the outliner. Now, before you do anything else, we're gonna move all of these objects to their own collection just to stay organized. You can do that by hitting M, move it to its own collection. We'll call it Rigid Bodies. At this point, we can go ahead and hide the original plane from the view and from the render. We're not gonna need it anymore. Now, before we create that force field effect, I want to simulate all of these objects so that they're not floating. You can see some of these objects are kind of floating in the air, which, do, which doesn't really look that great. So what we'll do is we'll simulate all of these objects on a plane, and then we'll create another simulation with those force fields. So to do that, let's press Shift A, we'll add in a new plane object, scale this plane up till it's bigger than the uh, particles. Then we're gonna jump over to the physics panel, create a rigid body object, and switch the type over to passive. Passive means that it's gonna stay in its original position, but it'll still interact with the rest of the objects. Now, we'll box select everything, make sure the plane is not selected, then hold shift and select one of the objects. One thing that we need to fix is the origin. You can see here the origin is positioned right at the bottom, which is gonna make this object rotate along that origin, and it's gonna look really weird when it's trying to simulate with the rigid body system. We wanna make sure the origin is in the middle. To do that, let's right click, set origin, and origin to geometry. Now it's right in the middle, and now we can simulate properly. With everything selected, we're gonna go up to object, down to rigid body, and then click on add active. Over on the right side, we're gonna open up the surface responses and make sure you hold the Alt key. If you hold Alt, 
select the setting and go with like 0.7 for the friction. Now each of these objects should have that 0.7 because you hold the alt key. We're going to do that same thing. We're going to select everything over in the dynamics. We're going to hold alt once again for the dampening translation. We're going to hold alt, select it and go with a value of 0.08 in the rotation. We're going to hold alt, select it type 0.2. That'll also help with trying to mitigate that random wobbliness. So now we are ready to simulate. Make sure you save your project just in case this crashes and then hit the space bar. Now this might take a minute because it's trying to simulate a lot of different objects, but just give it one moment and it should work properly. All right, there we go. I've simulated it for about 85 frames and everything is resting on the plane, which is perfect. At this point, what we need to do is apply the transformation to all of these objects. Because right now, if we were to restart the simulation, it's going to go back up to where its original position. So what we want to do is right at the frame that you want, we'll box select all the objects, select that one, and then deselect the plane. We're going to go up to object, down to rigid body, and then click on apply transform. Now, when we restart the animation, all of the objects will still be right there, which is what we want. What I might do is just select a couple of these random objects that are scattered a bit too far and just delete them. We're not going to really need them in the scene. Next, we're going to add a constraint to every single one of these objects and attach it to the plane object. Constraints are very useful when working with the rigid body system. They allow you to control different movements like rotation, springs, or even adding a motor with the rigid body system. I did a whole video on constraints and you can check that out by clicking in the top right corner right now. So to get this to work, we're gonna box select everything and then hold shift, select the plane last so it's the active object. Make sure you save your project before you do this because this will take a while to calculate. We're gonna go up to object, down to rigid body and then select connect. Now again, this will take a long time because it's adding a constraint to every single one of the objects in the scene, but just give it a couple of minutes and it'll work itself out. There we go, it's added all of the constraints to every single object, but now the very important step is to come over to this menu on the bottom left and change it from center over to selected. Now again, this is gonna take a while to calculate, but that's a very important step because it's gonna take every single one of these constraints and move it towards the center of each of the objects rather than the center of the scene. And after a minute, it finally calculated and here we have all of the empties in the correct positions. Now for the settings, we're gonna go into the front view, wireframe, and then just box select all of the empties and then select one of them to be the active object. Again, we're going to come over to the settings, holding the alt key, go to type and switch it over to generic spring. Now you can see here, all of them are switched to that generic spring, which is exactly what we want. Next, we're going to hold the alt key again, uncheck disable collision. That will make sure all of the objects collide with the plane. And then we're going to scroll down all the way to the springs. Here is where we're going to set up how they're going to snap back to where its original position after the force field leaves. And to do that, we're gonna be using the linear springs. Holding the Alt key, we're gonna go X, Y, and Z. As for the stiffness, this is the strength of that spring. The higher you set it to, the harder it's going to pull back to its original position. For the stiffness on the X, we're gonna go with a value of 20. Make sure, again, you're holding the Alt key. Stiffness Y, we're gonna go with 20. And then the Z, we are also gonna go with 20. The damping also, what this will do is help dampen the effect as it's pulling back. If the dampening is set to zero, the object will be pulled back to the center and just go past it and keep going along that direction. So make sure the dampening, we're gonna go with a value of one, holding alt on all of these settings. Now working with all of these constraints in the scene is a little bit hard to see. So let's move them to their own collection. We're gonna press M collection and just call it constraints. So now we can turn them off if we need to, just so we can see the scene a bit better. The next step is to create a path for the force field to go through all of our objects. We're gonna be using a curve Bezier curve, go into top view by hitting seven and then wireframe. And now we can position the start over here, select at this point and just start messing around with this curve until you get a path that you like.
Jump over to the curve settings right here. If we zoom in, you're gonna notice it's a little bit low poly. Let's bring up the resolution to 32 for both the render and the preview. Now you can see it's nice and smooth. As for the path animation, the frames right here controls how fast the object will go through the curve. We're gonna go with 250 so it lasts for the entire animation. Next, we're gonna press Shift A, go over to Force Field, and then add in a Force object. We're gonna jump over to the Physics panel, and here is where we're gonna change the settings so it actually pushes away all of the different rigid bodies. The strength of this, we're gonna go with 800, and the very important step is the fall off. Right now, there is no fall off, so that means it's gonna have a force of 800 for the entire world scene. Instead, we want to constrain that force to a very small section when this force field is moving through the curve. For the shape of this fall off, we don't want to use sphere, we want to use tube so we can control the height and the radius. The first values right here are for the height. We're going to check the minimum and maximum values and set both of these to two. So now, if anything goes above this height right here, it's going to have a fall off and there's going to be no force field effect up here. But again, this is only for the height. For the actual radius, we want to use the radial option. We're going to click on use minimum and use maximum. For the minimum distance, let's go with a value of 0.6. And then for the max distance, let's go with a value of 1.2. So you can see here we have the radial effect. So everything inside this minimum will have a full 800 strength. And then right when it hits this edge and goes outwards, it's going to, it's going to fall off from 800 all the way to zero at the outer perimeter. Next, to have this object follow the curve, we're gonna jump over to the Constraints tab, click Add Constraint, and select Follow Path. As for the target, we're gonna use the Bezier curve. If this happens and you notice the object goes to the other side, I want it to start on this side and go through. Just select the curve, go into Edit Mode, press A to select everything, and then right click, and click on Switch Direction down here. Now the force field should be at this position. Make sure you select the force field and then click on animate path so it actually goes through our scene. And that is basically all we really need to do. From here, make sure you save your project, jump over to the scene panel, and then open up the rigid body world section. Here we can change the start and end frame. If you want your simulation to last longer, you can set the end frame right here. But since I have the curve set at 250 frames, I'm gonna leave it at 250. From there, make sure you save your project once again and then click on Bake. All right, the simulation has finished and here is the result. If we play it, you can see it is working and it's pushing all of the objects around as it goes through. For the rest of this tutorial, I'm gonna show you what I did to create this cool effect with the ball and then the grid for the plane. To get the ball, we're going to select our force field, press Shift S and go cursor to select it. Our cursor is going to be placed right there, and then we're just going to add in a new UV sphere. Scale this UV sphere down and then drag it up till it's right about that height. Then from here, you can press Control 2 and that's going to add a subdivision surface modifier, then right click and shade it smooth. With it still selected, you can hold shift, select the force field, and then parent by hitting control P, parent the UV sphere to the force field. So now it's gonna move with it as it goes through the curve. For the material for this UV sphere, I went over to the shading workspace and then created a new one. As for the principal shader, we're not gonna need that. We're gonna be adding in any emission shader. Place that right here. Take the emission and plug it into the surface. Then to give it that cool effect as you saw in that video, what I did is I added in a texture, a noise texture, placed that here, and then I added a converter color ramp. I took the factor, plug it in, and then the color into the strength. For the color, we're gonna go with a yellowish, orangish color, something like that. And then what you can do is just play around with this color ramp until you get this effect. You can also turn up the detail to get some nice cloudy look. Then to brighten this up, we can add in a math node, switch the type from add to multiply, and now this bottom value controls how bright it's gonna be. I went with a value of 50 for my scene. If we then play our animation, you should be able to see that this does light up our scene a little bit if we go into the rendered view. There you go, you can see it is lighting it. 
if you think the lighting is not as much as you would like, what you can do is just add in a lamp right underneath the UV sphere. You can do this by adding in a light, a point light, drag it up till it's right underneath, and then again, parent this light to the force field. Control P and then select object. Now you can see we have a much brighter light and then you can come over here and change it over to that same orangish color and then play with the strength. You can go with like a value of 20. So now it should be a lot brighter. As for the grid floor, what you can do is select the plane and create a new material. What we want to do is press shift A, add in a texture and then use a brick texture. Then we're going to add in a texture coordinate node under input texture coordinate. Take the object, plug it into the vector, and then the color into the base color of the principled shader. And there you should see it in your scene. If we zoom in here, you're going to see the bricks are offset by half, and to fix that, we can set the offset down to zero. Now they're all lined up perfectly. To get them to look a little bit bigger and to be square, we want to change the brick height down here to match the brick width. So let's go with a value of 0.5. If you like the different variations in colors, you can keep it as it is, or if you want the same color of grid, you can set the color two option to the same as color one. So we'll click here with the eyedropper tool, select the color one. Now they're all gonna be the exact same. From here, we can set the scale to what we want. I might go a little bit uh, lower so the grid is bigger. Something like that looks pretty good. And then for the mortar size, you can go lower and this will decrease the width of the black lines and that gives us a really nice look. As for the principled shader, I like to go with a value of 0.1 for the roughness. That way we get a nice glossy look. And then one more tip that I'll show you before we end this video is this lamp right here. I don't really like that little spot on the grid floor. And what you can do to fix that is select the lamp over in the lamp settings underneath influence, turn off glossy. And now that lamp will not show up in the grid floor, but it'll still light up the scene. If you want to add an HDR, head over to the world settings and underneath the color option, switch it over to environment texture. Then you can click on open. If you want to use the same HDR I'm using, I'll put the link in the description. It's this one right here, the surgery 4K. Go ahead and open that up. And now if we go into the rendered view, you should be able to see it in our scene. Over in the render settings, ray tracing should already be enabled if you use the blend file that I had provided. If not, go ahead and enable it right there and set the resolution to 1.1. And in the color management, I like to set the look to high contrast and then add a little bit of motion blur as well. The shutter amount can remain at 0.5 and for the steps, let's go up to a value of about five as well. And that is basically it for this tutorial. At this point, you can add your own camera and position and animate it how you like, and then render out an animation. If you made it to the end and made something cool, feel free to send it to me on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy. If you have other ideas for tutorials you would like to see in the future, leave them down in the comments below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.